On this episode, we try something difficult. It totally works. We are trying to make a thing. Uh, 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 the enemy didn't think. However, our celebrations may have been premature. Oh, ho, ho. did you see what just happened? Ooh. Water, the elixir of life. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Christian from Lazy Devs. Welcome to uh, the Advanced Rock Tutorial. Today, brains. Um, last time around we did some tweaks and we talked about you know, in general the idea that we're gonna have for our brains. We're gonna create like a brain interpreter. We're gonna create like a little system that turns data into behavior. Um, and today we want to do this thing. We want to do, create the brain database. We want to create like the, uh, the infrastructure that holds that data and that gets that data into where it belongs, where we then can start working on the interpreter. So, you know the drill, uh, we're going to have to cre create a new text file. Right, so we can maybe already include it right while we're here. So we're going to call this include a shmup brains. Just like that. I, I like the, the name brains. I don't know. Um, you could also call it AI or behavior, you know, but I don't know, brains seems, <laughs> seems a little bit more fun. Right, so here we're gonna create another, you know, this, this we have a lot of text files here that are just like the stuff. Maybe we should create like a subfolder. I'm not even sure if Pico8 can do that with a subfolder, but maybe, maybe I should look into it. But for now, let's go shmup brains. Right, we're gonna open this up. And inside we're gonna do brains equals, oh, let me let me zoom in a little bit. All right, brains equals um, split 2D. And then, you know, zero, 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 just so we have some, some entries, right? Immediately we, there's, there's a problem here, right? Because if you think about it, we are gonna have a like three dimensional array, not just two dimensional array. So we would have to write a split 3D or something. Uh, that doesn't feel great. Um, because it's like each brain will consist of multiple lines and each line will have multiple entries. So it's like, the individual entries are like in each one line is an array and that is inside a bigger area of, of the actual brain. And then we have multiple brains. So that's three dimensions. And we are only working with two dimensions here. So either we want to write a split to 3D or we can like put a split in there. That's also not, not ideal. Uh, another thing that you could do is, you, and that's maybe the, the approach I will pursue here, is um, you could also turn a, a brain into a one-dimensional array. So all the different lines inside a brain, they're all one large line that will then just like be read sequ sequentially. That might be a, maybe a better choice. I'm not exactly sure. Oh my gosh, the camera is giving out. All right, so while uh, past Christian is fixing the camera, let me, future Christian, uh, real quick clarify our setup for the, the brains. Um, so currently, this is our idea. Now we have kind of like a block here that's gonna be like the command. And then we have like another block that's gonna be the parameter, uh, parameter one. And then we have another block that's gonna be the parameter two. And so that's gonna be one line of code, right? Um, and then they are comma separated. And then um, the idea here was that we maybe we can just put them in a in an array that each line will be put into its own individual array, and then we can have multiple one arrays, right? So we, that's that's going to be like um, one brain will be multiple arrays, and each array will be one command, and then this whole thing will be its its brain that that goes into one big array. So that's kind of like the second dimension here. And then we're gonna have multiple brains like this. We're gonna first, we're gonna make this a bit smaller. And this is how we're gonna have multiple brains. So we're gonna have like basically something like this, right? So there's gonna be like an array of brains um, like this. But the problem that I encountered here is that we, this is a three-dimensional array. So there is like the array of brains, 
then each error brain is its own array. And then inside each brain, each command is also an array. So that's one, two, three, three dimensions. That's too many dimensions. I mean, we could do it, but we would have to do a, a complicated unpack function to make this work. So instead, here's a different solution that we can use. Instead of packing each line into its own little array, what we can do instead is we're going to make one big array where all of the commands uh, are uh, stored one after each other. So something like this. So like a big huge array of subsequent commands and each command follows the other uh, without any interruption. And then we can have multiple brains going like this. And they go all in one big array, which goes like this, right? So then, then we have just two dimensions. One dimension for the brains and the second dimension is like the second array level layer is going to be for each individual brain. Each brain is an array of individual entries, which may be a command or a parameter. The only problem that we have here is that when we're reading out the, the commands from the brain array, we always want to make sure that we're jumping three entries, right? Every three entries, we're getting, going to get a new command. So we have to be really careful on how we're reading out the brains. Otherwise, this gives us like a two-dimensional array as we have before. So we can store this complex structure in a two-dimensional array if we just make sure that we read it out correctly. Anyway, back to past Christian. Is that better? <laughs> okay, so the camera was couldn't take the, the, the genius ideas that I was spreading. Um, so yeah, each brain will just be the huge sequence of of entries and we're gonna have to be really smart about how we read them out. Um, but for now, let's just save this and uh, let us close this. Uh, also something I wanna be doing here, I'm, so I'm gonna do a copy of our editor. I'm gonna call it brain, brain edit, brain edit. All right, load brain edit. Right, so shmup brains, um, shmup brains, array name brains, and then brains, right, save run. All right, here's um, the, our, our, our two brains that we just created. All right, so let us create a brain. Let's just create like a very simple brain. Um, so first is gonna be the command, and we could just write in like a number in there, but I think it would be good for us, for our soul. <laughs> to actually make it readable with our eyes because I think just like a whole sequence of numbers is might not, not be readable for us. Let us create something called uh, a command, right? The command, the first command in this brain is going to be head, like heading, right? Ooh, but that doesn't work in this editor because the editor turns everything into a number. So this time around, I want to maybe do uh, some tweaks to the editor. Here's when we press uh, enter, right? This is where we press enter. Um, and the type val uh, becomes um, to num, but we, this time around we're gonna just, just gonna set it to, to this. And if it's nil, if it's nil um, or type val equals, if it's, if it's nothing, then, then we're gonna delete the cell. So if we type in nothing, then we wanna delete, but if there's something in there, I'm gonna keep this around. Um, and that should should fix this. Let's try that. So here we're gonna do like head. Yeah, okay. So three letters for a command, uh, the letter heading. Um, we, we said uh, 0 0.1 was a good heading and the second number is gonna speed. So this is kind of like one brain command that we have, right? We have a heading, we, we execute a command heading and this command has two parameters, basically a function, we're executing a function. That function takes two parameters. One is the angle and the other one is the speed. And that will set a angle and a speed for an enemy. And this first entry here, that's basically our, our brain one. This is brain two. So let's do, let's set up a brain two here. That's gonna be head. Um, this time around, we're gonna go in a different direction. So we're gonna go minus 0 0.1. Uh, and we have to maybe make those boxes a little bit bigger so we can have negative values easily. And then, uh, and this time it's gonna be, it's gonna be faster, it's gonna be speed two, just so we can see a difference between those two brains. All right, let's export this. Let's see if this loads, it, it sure does. Okay, so we now have created a table of two brains. Let's get those into uh, our actual game. Load cow schmap. 
All right, so we are working on the brain database. We do are we are including the brains. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this? So we have to, uh, brain one and brain two, right? And now when we're creating the enemy, All right? So we're getting the brain from um, uh, the brain is just like a number that we're getting. I'm, I'm gonna real quick. I'm gonna do a comment in here. I'm just gonna hard code this to brain one, so we can switch between one and two, and we should see different behaviors on the enemies. Oh, by the way, before we even go there, I want to spawn an enemy quicker, so you know we don't have to wait until this huge formation to show up. How about we're gonna launch with an enemy already? Let's let's wait five five scrolls or ten scrolls, right? And then we're gonna create an enemy here. Um, let's move it. What is the position? I don't know, even know what the center is. We maybe should create like some guidelines to show us what a center is and so forth. Maybe it's like some kind of grid system. I don't know. I think it might be a good idea. I'm gonna spawn it so it touches the edge of the screen, uh, of the top edge of the screen. And then we're gonna see what happens. Cow schmup run. There's our enemy. It's moving slowly because we had like this hard-coded system here that we had uh, we have here. Let me let me what happens if we don't do anything? Yep, and it's touching the top edge of the screen as I wanted. Cool. So basically here we're executing the enemies. We want to also execute the commands of the brain associated with those enemies, right? So for first of all, we're going to do something like um, local my brain equals brains e dot brain i'm not sure if this is a good idea it might be a good idea to when we're doing this stuff here to not save a number <clears throat> in the enemy but actually the actual reference to the brain so we can maybe get it out I'm not sure. Let's let's continue like this. This is maybe an optimization later on, depending on you know how that works. Um, how about we, we abbrevi abbreviate this my bra? So now we want to kind of like remember which line we're executing in the brain, right? So so um, bi bri bri. <laughs> let's call it bri. So that's kind of like the or burl berline. Bi, like let's call it bri. Um, so that's kind of like the line that we're executing. We're gonna set it, um, or the index that where we start executing the code. Um, we're gonna set it to one at the beginning, right? So we're gonna go like, but well, basically we're gonna do like something like if um, my bra e bri. So if, if we're gonna get a command from our brain. And if that equals head, if that equals heading, then, um, and then we're gonna go e dot ang equals, and then we're gonna get the second entry and the, um, like the next entry from our brain, that's gonna be <clears throat> uh, my uh, bra, e bra plus one, and the speed, This is going to be the next entry, plus two. That is the idea. So now we're getting the speed and the angle from um, from uh, from our enemy. And oh, yeah, I deleted the code, but actually we want to keep this code around. So we're going to do like e dot. Um, so let's bring this back, right? So we want do we do want to calculate the s x and s y? Let's see if this works. Um, but in order to see if this works, I'm going to set the angle and speed to both to zero. So usually our brain is not moving and we, on only, we want to see it now moving. Let's see. It totally moves. It's moving. We, we set the speed and angle to zero. So it got speed and angle from the brain code. So let's see what happens when we set it to the brain number two. It totally works. It totally works. <laughs> so now uh, it's not a big deal, right? It's just reading two values from an array, right? But okay, so we executed a single line of code, but that's not how code works, right? Usually what how code works is it then executes the next code, the next line. It, it, there's like multiple lines of code that it executes. And we don't have that capability yet. So let us maybe expand 
our brains to make it work with multiple lines. I'm going to save. Um, by the way, that flattened includes, we might talk about that at the end of the episode. Uh, load brain edit. All right, so let us try to invent some more elaborate code. Now, uh, if this is going to be like code that, that describes a sequence of some things are happening over time, right, then uh, it would make sense maybe to add a command that allows us to wait for a couple of frames. So it's like, we're going to go in this direction for a couple of frames, and then we're going to change direction, right? So how about we do that? So let us just add, and again, this is like the problem that again, the entire code is just one very long array, right? So we're going to go add another uh, entry here, and we let's call it TME for time. And we're going to make the, the uh, or maybe we're going to set it to way. You know what? Let, let's set it to, let's call way for wait. And we're going to make the this enemy wait for, um, for one second. That's going to be 60 frames. I'm not sure if frames is a good idea to, to use here because maybe the waiting time will be really, really big. Let's keep it around for now. We're going to add a second entry because we want to kind of keep it consistent. We, we're going to get into troubles if the amount of uh, parameters per command uh, vary. Uh, I think that's going to be a bit problematic. We might have to implement that kind of system eventually because it will save on the data a little bit. Um, but for now, I just want to make our lives a little bit easier. It's already complicated enough, right? And I want to make just like, I'm going to establish a rule for now that every command has two parameters following it. All right, so now I want um, our, our enemy to read first the heading command and then skip immediately to the wait command and execute that command. And then we're going to do like another heading command, head. Um, and we're going to change direction. Uh, let's change it to 0 0.5. That should be going up uh, at a speed of uh, 0 0.5, a uh, very slow speed, okay? So it will go down at a diagonal uh, for 60 seconds. It will wait. Wait means that, that doesn't stop. It just keeps doing what it was doing for 60 frames. And then it once it does that, it should go up again. That's our little brain code. I'm gonna export this, and you can already tell that ooh, this is this is this is not cool. <laughs> we want them to maybe arrange them differently, like vertically, not to the side. But for now, that's okay. All right, so let's go into Couch Map, um, and then well, let's um, implement it so that first of all, let's make it so that the time command is something that is being cherished by by our our um, interpreter. Right. So if my bra uh, is if that's head, then else if if that's uh, was it it was way right then so now we need to add uh, two more variables to our enemy and one is going to be uh, weight also let's call it time or, or no no let's call it wait 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 equals zero uh, that will basically stop the execution of more brain commands and then we also want to add another no that's it that's, that's the only one we want to do. So um, if we have the way, then we're going to go e dot wait equals my bra like this, and we can we probably should put these into helper variables eventually. For now, I just want to see something happening, right? Um, and then here we're going to do if e dot wait is greater than zero, then else. Right, and then e dot wait minus equal one. So if if we are supposed to wait for a couple of frames, then we're we gonna count down that timer. Otherwise, we're gonna execute the the brain. There's one one last thing missing, and that is after we execute a command from the brain, I want to advance to the next command, right? So uh, what I want to do here is I want to do Bry, I want to advance Bry. So we're going to go e dot Bry plus equals three because we want to step along our brain string of commands. We want to step three spaces. The actual command and its two parameters, we're going to skip over there, over those, and that should give us the next command. Now, the next command will execute in the next frame. 
and I don't like that too much. I think we, they sh we should eventually do like a like a loop in there, but for now it's fine. And it, oh, one last thing I want to do is I want to make sure that if we get to the end of the brain, we're not doing anything anymore. So it's like. Mm -hmm. Well, we can do that now, right? Like we can do like, if not my bra, e -e bra, right? Then else. Is that good? Do nothing. Is that good? That's, uh, it seems a bit wrong. Yeah, maybe, maybe let's do that like this. So we're gonna go if um, e dot, Bry is smaller than hashtag my my bra. So yeah, then so we're gonna only execute the brain if the index that we're reading from actually contains something. That's better. Okay, something like this. E -b -d -b -d -d equals. So let me let me heading speed set heading speed wait x frames. Just like making sure that I understand what because y and head are readable but not necessarily understandable from you know like intuitively let's see if this will work maybe it did i don't know mm, we have to tweak the code i think it has to move a bit slower because <laughs> it, it i think it went by went by too fast uh, but something we can also, also already do is we can actually do like um debug uh, add debug um, and then this. So we want to add, maybe add the command to the debug so we can see what is being executed. Uh, let's do it like this. Head. It did not exe execute the, the wait. Oh, maybe because I set it to brain two and brain two only has one command. So let's set it back to brain one. I think it's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Did you see what just happened? Did, ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These are all of the commands executed by each individual enemy. <laughs> let's try it again. Uh, uh. The enemy didn't think. Man, this just like worked. I'm kind of like blown away. Let us maybe uh, optimize this code a little bit because I'm <laughs> this is a bit of a salad. And also uh, maybe I want to put it in its own um, in its own function so we can maybe um, put it later on in an editor because we probably gonna need an editor for that because you see that you know it's kind of awkward to be going out into an editor then doing the changes and going back in the game running it waiting until the enemy appears and seeing it you want to be like seeing the enemy moving around on the screen and like working on its brain as it's moving around right so we are definitely gonna need an editor for that but this is this is hot how about we're gonna fun go fun uh, go with a function do brain br 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 right uh, I probably also want to have an N, right? N. Let's just let's just go like this. This is kind of like the same as do enemies in many ways, but okay, let's try that. Um, do brain, N, right? And this will allow us to get this stuff out and put it in here. So now we just we only have to do brain. Okay. The waiting is not part of the brain, that is part of the enemy behavior. And then this is just like the brain code, right? This is just the code responsible for the brain. Oh, <clears throat> we're getting the bra. Uh, and I also want to get the... Okay, if the bra exists, then... Uh, this is cool, but we not necessarily need it. Okay, so let's go like local 
cmd equals, um, this is going to be the command. And then par one, parameter one, parameter two. That's going to be bright plus one and plus two. Something like this. Uh, then we're debugging this. We don't need the debug maybe anymore. It's, it's fine. It's, we, we'll be good. Uh, and then this allows us to work with those um, helper variables instead of work relying on this, on this uh, always uh, doing the uh, array access. We don't need that array access. Yeah, 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 something like this. Something like this is, is what I'm thinking. Right, and then we're gonna, we're gonna do the e bry plus three, and then if we do that, then we can do go do brain n again, right? Uh, oh, by the way, we we say e, but it should be, oh, let's call it just e, and that will, <laughs> then we don't have to rewrite everything. Right, so, after we advance the brain by three, we execute again. And we just keep executing. Oh, wait, 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 wait. See, sometimes we don't want to execute it again. So if we, there's a wait associated, what, if there's a wait, then we don't want to execute. Um, so maybe we should do something like local quit uh, or local next uh, advance. Let's, let's call it let's call it quit equals false uh, and then if um, if we wait then we're gonna say quit equals true and then we're gonna go if quit then return end. otherwise do bring so let me what happens when we reach the end if we we advance three and that is will put us um over the end then we're not going to execute this all if statement and that will just terminate the, the next do brain execution okay that's good so this is kind of like a recursive thing that we're doing right now we're going you know recursively calling the do brain function the do brain function calls itself um and we're just using this to just ex execute multiple brain commands in one frame um, we could put it in a loop as well, but I think this is a bit more, uh, it's a bit more compact and more elegant. Um, we, the, we have to be careful that we, this will return a out of memory error, which is not very helpful. <laughs> so whenever we see it in an out of memory error, there's a good, there's a good chance that we recursively uh, called a function um, infinitely until it ran out of memory. And then again, it won't tell us where that happened. So we need to be aware of that problem. Uh, is it quit? Is, is quit a result? No, it's not, right? Is that the problem? Oh, there is an end too much. Let's run this. Um, did we not execute it correctly? Let me let me let me see. Do enemies do brain n? Oh yeah, it should be n. It should be e. Yep, still doing the brain thing. Oh, excellent, excellent. Yes. All right, man. This is we got the brain basics down. Let us move on to the doggy zone. Mm -hmm. The doggy zone. Mm. Right, doggy zone. Doggy zone thinking. Let's put on the doggy zone cap. So there is like two important two important steps that we that we need to go do next, and both of these are free for you to choose as you wish. First of all, first task is to add more functionality to to the brains, like make the brains more capable. So right now we're changing the heading, and we can wait a couple of seconds, a couple of frames. That's great. What else can we do? What do we need to make cool? Enemy behavior, maybe there's gonna be a shooting thing, maybe you want to actually animate something over time, making you know those sweeping curves and slides, stuff like that. There is probably a couple of commands still that we want to add. And uh, yeah, you come up with your own commands and let me know in the comment section what cool commands you came up with. Second big task, and that is broadly speaking the thing that we're probably gonna do in the next episode, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, editor. Right now the editor is kind of already, like we have like three commands and our brain is already at its limit. 
So we probably want to get in there and, and, and change it and tweak it so we can do some real nice brain surgery. Those are the two tasks for the dog zone. And you're right, at the end of each episode, as I always, I say a big thank you. Huge shout out to all the beautiful people, to all the incredible people who are who decided to support my work on coffee.com slash lazy devs. Thank you so much for your support. Right, so there's some questions I want to answer. This one is from Mr. Troglodyte on uh, in the Discord, uh, and he asked a lot, a lot of questions. There's one question I wanted to uh, highlight, I wanted to uh, answer, is, and that is, does the BBS support including the various external include text files, or are those going to be passed paste it in at the very end to make a BBS friendly all-in-one card. Yeah, so I wasn't really maybe very clear about this, but um, um, but to reiterate, um, if your file is a P8 file, like in our case, if this is like a P8 file that you're working on, that file won't include all the includes. So you, if you're sharing the P8 file with somebody, just a P8 file, then you also need to um, share with them the all the text file that this file is referencing all this stuff is not being par saved in the p8 file however if you export the p8.png file you know this weird format where all the card data is encoded in a png file if you do that then all the includes are flattened as, as we say so all the includes are taken from the, the individual text file and pasted in here and then it gets saved as a png file and when you upload stuff to the BBS, then you always have to, there's different ways of doing this, but usually you have to upload the PNG file. Therefore, automatically, you know, every time you upload something to the BBS, you also up upload all of the text files. All the text files are already included in the file that you're uploading. Same goes when you export this thing as an HTML file or export as an executable. Uh, for all those formats, you don't have to supply the text files. The text files you only really need if you're editing the P8 file uh, directly. Hope this clears it up. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So the brain thing sounded complicated, but in the end, it was kind of easy so far, right? Like so far, it's not that crazy and we're having a lot of flexibility a lot of functionality encoded into this brain system next time we're going to work maybe on the editor and we're going to do some sweet sweet brain surgery see you next time around guys bye bye